Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me this afternoon to learn more about this very important seminar, how to manage debt so it doesn't manage you. I'm Jackie Daigle, the Relationship Development Officer for Clearview Federal Credit Union. It's a lot of sun shining outside as I sit here in my office at home, so it's great to have all of you aboard. Maybe you have thought about why am I attending this seminar today? So maybe you may have a life story that created some debt for you. That's why you're here. Maybe you even managed to get yourself out of debt. Or maybe you have made made a commitment to yourself or to someone else to never ever get into debt. Please keep in mind that the seminar is geared towards individuals who are, <clears throat> excuse me, the seminar is geared towards individuals who are already in debt as well as those who wish to stay out of debt. The purpose of our seminar today is to give you valuable tools to manage your debt during the good times as well as the bad. Also, keep in mind throughout the presentation that not all debt is bad. Let's get started to learn more. Our seminar objectives will include what is debt? What are the types of debt? What is good debt versus bad debt? Are there costs and benefits associated with debt? Are there warning signs that you have too much debt? What is your credit report and your score say about your debt? And how can you manage your debt? How can you tackle the debt that you currently have, avoid pitfalls, and how can you stay out of debt once and for all to improve your credit? What is debt? Debt is money that you borrow. It is used by individuals as a method of making large purchases that they could not afford under a normal circumstance. A debt arrangement gives the borrowing party permission to borrow money under the condition that it is to be paid back at a later date. I want you to think about this question for a moment as we get started in our presentation. What is required to dig yourself out of debt? Just take a moment to think about what do you think it takes? I have thought about that question a few times and some of the things, things I consider are the willpower to change our old habits, a commitment to also change the old habits, a serious plan and determination or a few words that I can think of. Now, as Simone had mentioned, there will be some handout, handouts that will be sent to you. I strongly encourage you to complete all of these as accurately as possible. You will be taking these home and you can make any necessary changes with who, whomever you share your finances with. When you are completing any of the handouts that you will see throughout my presentation, I want you to remember it's very important when completing the surveys to know where you are so that you also know where you need to get to. That is a very important thing to remember throughout the presentation. Now we can break down the types of debt into three different categories. They include secured and unsecured, fixed interest rates and variable interest rates, installment credit and revolving credit. On the next slide is a breakdown of what each of these will signify. Secured credit utilizes a form of collateral that would include a house or maybe even your car. Unsecured credit has no collateral whatsoever. That would include credit cards or personal loans. Fixed interest rates include your mortgages and car loans because the interest rate stays the same for the entire timeline of that loan. A variable interest rate would include credit cards or payday loans because the interest rate may change over the life of the loan that is variable interest. Installment credit is a loan that is set to be paid off by a certain time, certain date that would include a mortgage or even a student loan. Now revolving credit would be those that include your credit cards and cash advances 
because there is no set date by when the debt must be repaid. Keep in mind when you do have a credit card with a balance on it, it the balance will change or fluctuate depending on how many charges that you have made with this credit card throughout a specific time period. Also, keep in mind that if you only make that minimum payment on your credit card, it is going to take you longer to pay, pay it in full due to the accrued interest on that credit card. Let's learn about breaking down debt. We know that these are the four main sources of credit debt that lead to consumer debt. Mortgages, vehicle loans, credit cards, and student loans. What are some of the benefits of credit? When credit is used wisely, credit can enhance your lifestyle, making it easier to purchase larger items like a home, a car, or even fund an education. So the question is, is credit and taking on debt ever a good idea? Let's take a close look at two activities about the positive as well as the negatives of credit and debt. Again, you will receive this handout on the pros and cons of credit. I encourage you to take it home and share it with whomever you share your finances with. Now, we do know one of the biggest concerns that people have is getting into trouble with credit. Maybe it's using too much credit. Maybe it's the irresponsible handling of credit. But did you know that if you use your credit wisely, you are offered competitive rates when borrowing? So is credit an advantage or would you consider it to be a disadvantage? Let's think about the word convenience for a moment. Using credit cards when you travel or maybe when you shop is more convenient than carrying cash. Would you agree? Using other people's money, this is during the time between when you buy something with credit and when you pay the bill, you're actually using someone else's money rather than your own. I would definitely consider that a convenience. Although when your credit is mismanaged, we often buy things we want rather than what we actually need. Carrying debt on high interest credit cards can add up to large amounts of interest when we do so. That is why it is so important to manage your debt so it does not manage you. Let's learn about the debt difference. What is good debt? In general, good debt is that which increases your net worth and or it helps to generate value. Good debt will also allow you to manage your finances more effectively, to leverage your wealth and to buy the things that you need and also to handle unforeseen emergencies. Bad debt, on the other hand, is that which does not ever increase your wealth and it is used to purchase goods or services that have no lasting value. Good debt versus bad debt. Consider taking out a mortgage, borrowing to save time and money, even maybe refinancing your home or investing for your future. These would be considered all excellent examples of good debt. Now, examples of bad debt would include buying those luxuries you cannot afford, carrying debt on higher interest credit cards. These will never ever increase your wealth and they have no lasting value. This is another handout about good debt versus bad debt. Please take them home, complete them, and compare them with who you do share your finances. You may be pleasantly surprised or maybe not so much. Let's learn about the cost of debt. Though debt can be very beneficial in temporarily expanding your income, we need to know that there may be and often are costs that go along with credit debt. On this slide, we can see some of the basic thoughts that need to go into play as you can decide whether or not taking on debt is worth it. The first question you must always ask yourself is, can I really afford this purchase? It goes above simply making your monthly payment. You need to consider other factors as well. 
what are the opportunity costs of taking on this debt? Will taking on this debt hinder my ability to meet other financial obligations? Will it prevent me from saving for my financial future, possibly like retirement? It's a very important question to ask yourself. The understanding of needs and wants is always critical. And when credit is involved, it is even more important. Creating debt because of a want can be a dangerous thing for your financial stability. Please remember the basic rule of thumb is 50, 30, and 20. The basic rule is to divide up after your taxable income and to allocate it to spend 50% on your needs, 30% is allocated for your wants, and 20% should always go into some type of a savings plan. Now let's take a look at how credit can affect people financially. Maybe, sorry, I'm still hold you up, thank you. The cost of credit and the effects of interest rate. This is a simple analysis based on three persons who are borrowing the same amount of money, $1,000. Their annual percentage rates are different, which of course equates to higher amounts of interest for the person who's paying the highest annual percentage rate. You look at the first person, they're being charged 10%, the one in the middle is 15, and the one on the end is being charged 25% APR. If you look at the amount of monthly payments, the number of months to pay off the purchase, and the total finance charges, it clearly indicates how important it is to pay attention to how much you're using your credit cards and more importantly, the annual percentage interest rate that you're being charged because the person that's paying 25% is being charged the most interest, $427 on the same amount that every all three had used it for. Let me show you another analysis. Interest for the, and also I wanted to mention the amount of interest is always calculated based on your credit score, which we will discuss a little later. The effects of interest rates. This is just another simple analysis of how much interest has been paid on a purchase of $20,000. $20,000 credit card balance at 18% interest when you make the minimum payment of only 2% of the balance each month. It will take you 30 long years to pay off this debt. And believe it or not, you're going to pay $50,225 in interest. So that $20,000 in purchases will really cost you $70,225. It's amazing when you see it on paper and when, when you start taking a close look at your debt and what you're paying in interest. It's so important to keep a very close eye on that. Now, up to this point, we have established what credit debt is, the types of credit debt, and the good and the bad of it. As mentioned, we recognize that one of the biggest concerns that people often have is getting in over their head in debt. What are some of the warning signs of too much debt? Let's take a look closer at our next slide. These are going to be a few of the more common warning signs that you are in over your head with a debt. Are you spending more than you earn? Have you skipped payments on some bills to pay others? <laughs> Excuse me. Are you making the minimum payments on your credit cards? Have you maxed out any of your credit cards? Are you paying day-to-day -day bills with credit cards? This is a really good one. Are you unsure about what you owe? So many times I find when I'm talking to people about their debt, they don't even know who they owe or what they owe or when their payments are due. Have you also thought about filing for bankruptcy? Have you argued with your loved one about money? Are creditors calling you about late bills? No, if you experience any of these, you should be taking the steps to get yourself back on track. Later in this presentation, you will be given some specific strategies to help you do so. I want you to please remember, the longer that you wait to do something, the harder it will be to get back on track. 
So take the steps to get back on track as soon as possible, because the worst thing you can do. Yes, it's nothing. Now, these are some more specific signs that you may have too much debt. Your debt to income ratio is more than 36%. Your debt to income ratio is the ratio between the amount of your recurring monthly debt, which would include your mortgage, auto loans, and credit card payments, and your gross monthly income. When you're thinking about the amount of debt that you have, it is best to think about it in terms of this ratio rather than measuring it by a set dollar amount. Now, I'd like to help you calculate your debt to income ratio. Take the total amount of your monthly recurring debt and divide it by your monthly gross income. Remember, do not include expenses such as your groceries, entertainment, gasoline as part of your monthly recurring debt. You're only going to include debt that would show up on your credit report. Your debt to income ratio is more than 36%. Most lenders will consider you overextended when your debt to income ratio is more than 36%. If you are overextended, you may also find that you are living paycheck to paycheck, or you're having trouble paying for other simple things like groceries, gasoline, and life expenses. Plus, when you have a debt to ratio income, that exceeds 36%, you may even find it difficult to obtain additional loans from reputable lenders. Do your credit card balances exceed 10% of your income? If you earn a $50,000 salary and you're carrying more than $5,000 on a revolving credit card, this could hamper your ability to respond well to a financial crisis. You should also have an emergency fund that consists of three to six months of your income. Now, how much money are you putting into an emergency fund? If your answer is nothing, or maybe it's just very little, this is a true warning sign of a debt problem. If all of your income is being put towards your loans and credit card payments, as well as necessary expenses that include groceries, maybe even your kids' school expenses, entertainment, gasoline, cell phone bills, there probably will not be enough left in order to save. So what happens when an unexpected expense comes up? If your car needs new tires before the first snowfall, how will you pay for that unexpected, possibly medical expense that may also arise? How will you pay for these unexpected situations? By taking out another loan or adding on to an existing one, putting aside three to six months of savings to take care of any emergencies that might come up is very ideal. This isn't always possible right away, and I do realize that, but I would advise you to start with setting little goals for yourself. It's so important to have this in place so you can take away the possibility of creating more debt when these emergency situations do arise. You have no money set aside for retirement. How many times in your life have you have you heard the saying, time is money? What an old saying, but it's so true. If your money is locked up making payments on credit card purchases, what will you do when you reach your retirement age? Planning for your financial future is critical, and it is your responsibility so if you don't dig yourself into debt, your ability to create wealth is so much easier. Did you know that most Americans are living paycheck to paycheck? Are you one of those? Because the amount of your debt is always changing and because it's not always a really great thing to be thinking about, it's so easy to lose track of just how much debt you actually have. If you are noticing that your money from paycheck to paycheck is not going as far as you would like, it is time to sit down and it is time to evaluate your debt. Following some of the advice that you will be exploring later in my presentation, it will help get you on the right track to make your financial life better. Now, credit debt has a huge impact on your credit score and your report. Let's consider some questions about what that means.
What is your credit report? A credit report is the record of your credit activities from the three major credit bureaus. It will list any credit card accounts or loans that you may have. It will also list, list your balances and how regularly you have made your payments. It also shows if any action has been taken against you because of unpaid bills. A credit report is a record of any of your credit activities from the three major credit bureaus that include TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax. I wanted to also mention that your credit report also will tell if you have any court judgments against you, such as, such as child support payments or lawsuits. Also, whether you have filed for bankruptcy in the past seven to 10 years. It also tells potential creditors and employers whether you have a lot of outstanding loans, how good you are at repaying your debt, and how high, as I mentioned, your credit limits are. Now, it does contain some personal information as well. It will contain your name, your address, a social security number, and your date of birth, as well as, as, well as the jobs that you have held, although it does not include your race, it does not include your religion, and it does not include your political preference. Now, just not anyone can look at your credit report, but anyone with a legitimate business interest can. Some examples would include a potential landlord, a lender, your insurance companies, and yes, potential employers. Yes, credit debt does have a huge impact impact on your credit report as well as your score. There's also a credit score that consumers should be concerned with. The Fair Isaac and Company score, which is also known as FICO. FICO score is an important indicator of your financial health as well. Did you know that when applying for a mortgage, you should always check your FICO score because it is the number one used score when considering lending. A credit score is a number that will represent your credit worthiness. How likely are you to repay the loan? The higher the number, the better for you. And these numbers will range from zero up to 850. We'll look at the credit score, the numbers, in just a moment. How can you get a copy of your credit report? You could visit www.annualcreditreport.com, or you can also call 877-322-8228. What is a good score and what is a poor score? The average FICO score is about 693, according to Experian. Typically, anything higher than around 760 is considered a very good credit score. If your score is lower than about 600, you likely will be charged higher interest rates, but that does vary by lenders. The number 720 to 850 means that you are consistently responsible when it comes to managing and borrowing. You also probably have a long history of no late payments. The number 680 to 720 means that you're generally financially responsible when it comes to credit management. Most of your payments are also made on time. If you fall between the numbers of 620 to 679, you do have a damaged credit history, commonly have had a credit record showing multiple late payments. You may even show a loan default if you fall under these numbers. The numbers 580 to 619 indicate that you have significantly damaged credit history. You may be the result of multiple defaults on different credit products from several different lenders. The numbers ranging from 0 to 579 indicate that you have extremely mishandled your credit or keep in mind there is no established credit score so therefore there would be no credit history
And keep in mind that there are several things that you can do to improve your credit score, but be aware that it may take time to see these improvements. Let's take a look at some specific component. Comp we've looked at the specific component components. I'm sorry of a credit score. I lost my slide. I apologize. How is your FICO, FICO score determined? In a nutshell, there are five variables that will affect your credit score. 35% is calculated by your payment history. 30% are the amounts that are owed on your debt. 10% is equal, equal new credit. 15% has to do with your length of credit history and 10% is credit mix. Now, an example of a healthy mix may include a mortgage, a credit card, or maybe even two, a personal loan, as well as a retail card. We will answer the question, how can you improve your credit score later in our presentation? Final section of our seminar is learning how to manage your debt. Our first step will be to examine how to tackle the debt that you currently have. Whether debt is causing you a lot of stress right now at this given moment, getting a handle on it is very important to gaining financial independence. When you are in debt, it can feel like a merry-go-round. We work, we get paid, and our hard-earned money goes blindly towards bills and debt repayment. How many of us would agree with that? I know I have been there. So consider taking some time to sit down and analyze your bills, and you might be surprised that you can free up some of your money to make more progress on your debt. It includes making a game plan. Also, going through each bill, ask yourself, how can I reduce this debt? Is there a cell phone bill carrier that I can find that is more affordable? This also goes for bills that you sometimes never see. Is there a subscription or a magazine subscription in the mail that just lies on the counter for the whole month until the next one comes in the mail? We have to know, we have to shop around and ask ourselves some questions. Online subscriptions often get renewed automatically. Were you aware of that? So what if you don't want this magazine subscription anymore, but you still have to pay for it? Now, there are a handful of strategies and theories about paying down debt. Some believe that you should start with the lowest balance first, pay it off, and then take whatever you were paying toward that and put it towards the next highest balance. This is called the snowball strategy. The idea is that the steady progress will build on itself as well as help you to stay motivated and follow through on each bigger debt. Be sure to set short term goals for yourself so that you can continue to see progress and do not lose your momentum. You will see there will be a debt snowball inventory sheet. I want you to take that handout home and create a list of all of your debts. Attacking the smallest debt first will always give you a feeling of accomplishment, and it will also free up some money to tackle other bills much more quickly. Just imagine it's like a rolling that snowball on the first winter day. Each bill that you pay off, it will create more of an opportunity to pay off even more. Remember, keep the momentum. Tackling your debt. Tackling your debt also involves getting organized. Now that you know what you owe, get your finances in order. It is time to organize your statements, your bills, and your balances on credit cards. Being disorganized can lead to even more stress and make you less motivated to perform. Here are some tips to help get you organized. Update your email addresses on all of your accounts. 
If you do this, you are getting all of your notifications from any credit cards, any of your loan lenders, your credit union, and any other bills to the same account. Make sure that you see what type of alerts that each account offers. Some offer text alerts and email reminders when your bill is due to keep you from avoiding any late payments. It's also important to mark on your calendar if you use a calendar when each bill is due. Cross it off when you have paid it. Also implement a system for paying your bills. Creating a document on your computer that can help you keep track of, where, of when you paid your bills would include the date that you paid and the confirmation number if you have paid online. Stop also blindly paying the minimum balance on what's due. Investigate every single credit card and every single bill to see what the charges are so that you can spot any errors. Eliminate also what you can. It's probably not going to wipe out all of your debt, but there is a chance that you can outright eliminate some of it. Also, did you know that if you have student loan debt, consider student loan forgiveness options. Inspecting your credit card statements. If you spot any errors or fraudulent charges possibly, if you're not checking your statements, there will always be a chance that you were double charged for something. Contact your credit card company immediately to dispute any of those incorrect charges. This would obviously reduce your debt immediately. Also, while inspecting your cards, if you see any additional charges, such as annual fees or late fees, contact your credit card company to see if they could waive these fees. Often the credit card companies can be forgiven when it comes to if you accidentally missed a, a date on the calendar and you missed the payment. So many times I know that they have, have been forgiven from what people tell me. And finally, as you are looking at your statements, do you see any recent purchases that you can return? If you went to Marshall's and you loaded up your buggy on a Friday night, you put these things in your closet, and you look next month and they all still have the tags on them, can you return any of these items? Be sure to return them to the store. If you're able to get a credit on your credit card or a refund if necessarily in any way. Tackling your debt. Your local credit union, credit counselors, certified financial planners, accountants, and attorneys are all great resources that you can turn to if you are struggling financially. Being afraid to reach out to these resources can really hold you back. Keep in mind, by contacting them, you are taking ownership for your finances, and that is really to be commended. Tackling your debt. Lower your interest rates. One of the most frustrating things I hear about debt is that even if you have stopped your spending entirely, the debt still grows. Why? Because of accrued interest. All your credit card companies, as I mentioned, ask if they can lower your interest rate. It may not happen, especially if your credit score has suffered because of late payments or high balances but I can assure you one thing, it is definitely worth that phone call. Another option is to transfer, excuse me. Another option is to transfer a portion of your high interest debt to a card with a lower interest rate. Ideally, a low fixed rate or a promotional 0% interest rate. One issue with this option, I want you to keep in mind is that opening another credit card account and then the credit inquiry will temporarily lower your credit score. Keep in mind, if you haven't paid off that transfer balance by the end of your promotional period, you will be right back to where you started with a high interest rate. So this is something that you need to base this decision on your personal situation. The question to ask yourself, is the payoff worth the drawback? 
I know that when I have used balance transfer offers in the past, I calculate the amount that I'm transferring and then I divide it by the amount of months that it's to be paid in full to avoid any of the accrued interest. You can also consider cutting your spending. Similar to cutting your bills, reducing your spending can help you get out of debt more quickly as well. The best way I wanna encourage you to cut spending is to stick to a budget each and every month. It's a tough thing to do, but once you get that momentum going, a budget can really help you cut the spending. You can figure out what you can cut also by reviewing your bank statements and your credit card purchases to figure out what you have been spending every month. Also, something I have found out is there are certain times of the month that you like to go out and spend money more frequently. Maybe it's every time you get paid, maybe it's every Friday. So be aware of those times when you are spending. With each purchase, First, ask yourself if this was a want or a need with the possibility of eliminating some of those wants all together in the future. As I mentioned, can you eliminate maybe a magazine subscription, maybe those professional manic manicures and luxuries such as the big screen TV that you just had to have to watch the Steelers finally win a game? Well, I shouldn't have said that, but. Also, maybe you bought some clothing that you really didn't need or eating at your favorite restaurants. Now that you've determined a few things that you can cut out completely, you know that you can put that money towards debt in the months that lie ahead. Even if you need to purchase something, there may be a cheaper way to do it or a way to cut back. You obviously need food, especially after you've worked all day but I forgot to take food out of the freezer, so what do I do? I guarantee you can spend less on food than you think. Cut down or el eliminate fast food and restaurants and eat at local restaurants that offer only special deals. Like a lot of restaurants have buy one meal, get the second one half off. I love these kind of deals because it makes me feel a little better that I just had to eat out tonight but look how much I just saved. How often do we say that to the person we're with? Those are those nights when you're just so busy and so tired. I bet a few of you have experienced that situation as well. Tackling your debt. Tackling your debt means often increasing your income when possible. Now, cutting back is beneficial to reducing your debt, but if you can combine it with increasing your income, you'll see your debt fade away even faster. We all know that getting a job with a higher salary is a surefire way to increase your income, but that's not always something that we can immediately make happen. However, you can devise a game plan to get yourself there. Have you updated your resume lately? Have you spruced up your LinkedIn profile? Have you started your job search? Consider even learning a new skill or a certification to increase your chances of getting hired. Also, it's that time of year where we tend to spend more money on our credit cards at Christmas time. Consider looking for a part-time job. Working both a full-time job and a part-time job can be rough but it is a good step towards paying off your debt. To make things a little easier on yourself, I would consider first shooting for a part-time position that's near to your home or your regular job to make your commute a little easier. Even choosing a part-time job that you might actually enjoy or one that offers an employee discount on items you tend to buy anyway. What a great idea to work at a place like that. Also freelancing, turn a skill into a nice side job by putting money towards your debt. Start by brainstorming your most marketable skills and traits. Freelancing opportunities exist for anywhere from makeup artists, writers, graphic designers, even accountants. 
interior de designers, editors, and many, many other roles. You can take on a gig or a side job. These are more flexible and not as concrete. It's always someone looking for extra help. So if you know how to repair household items, I would encourage you to do that. Make extra money with a hobby in your spare time. You can sell your crafts on Etsy or at craft shows. You can even pick, pick up cheap yard sale items and resell them on eBay or Craigslist. So when is the last time that you have gone through all of your closets and tried to reorganize? Because I can assure you, tackling your debt, when you sell what you don't need and you make a free fund to-do list, it's amazing how much extra money you can accumulate. A quick way to eliminate a portion of your debt is to sell these items that you no longer use. Once we start getting started on this project, it's something you can start today to get the debt ball rolling and you can quickly wipe out a chunk of that high interest balance that will give you the emotional jump start that you need to feel like you are finally making some progress. How many of you have ever used Marketplace? I love Marketplace because it has really allowed me not only to get rid of a lot of things I no longer use, but I've allowed other people to get a great deal on some of these items that are still in great shape, but it's allowed me to put a few extra dollars towards some of my debt. Make a fun free to-do list because paying off debt can be long and very cumbersome, cumbersome process. If you're working more, you're trying to cut back on your restaurants and other entertainment. It can be even more stressful when you're doing this. While it may not directly affect your debt pal, making time to still be social and have fun will improve your quality of life and it will also probably keep you on track a little better. Make a list of free or cheap things that you can do to relax and have fun. Research when your local museums offer free admission days and even see what types of free concerts or festivities or festivals are happening in your community. Also, find out what free events the businesses may offer, such as a brewery tour, free tastings, and even cooking demonstrations at local grocery stores. Tackling your debt. You are, I want you to take a close look at this picture. And what does it make you think of? makes me think of you are the person in this boat and you are going to envision, where am I going? But you have the paddle right next to you in your boat that will get you to the shore. Once you get there, you see the dollar sign that allows you to pick it up, put it in your pocket and think, I finally made it. Why? Because I did not give up and I had a plan in place. What a feeling of accomplishment. We're gonna learn how to avoid some of the pitfalls as we come to an end shortly on our presentation. So we know the process of becoming and remaining debt-free is a continuous one. Here are some strategies to help make sure once you're gaining some momentum towards financial freedom, you will not fall back. Many of these steps have been used with people who are in control of their finances, and it is never, ever too late to implement any of them. One of the most important actions that you can take to get control over your finances is to create a budget. As I mentioned, that is so important to have a budget in place. Also, setting up an emergency fund, just as important. Plan ahead for periodic expenses and do not use your credit as an extension of your income. Save rather than spend and attempt, if at all possible, when possible, to make more money. Reducing money worries. Let's 
starts with a budget. There will be more activities. Your handout will be number six to take home and implement a budget with whomever you discuss or plan your finances with. These are just a few of the uh, different uh, items that you may consider using when you are considering a budget. Get on your computer and see if there's, uh, I have found talking to a lot of people that there are some great online tools that you can use to help manage your finances. Uh, some people like to still use a calculator. If you're a mom, if you are my mom, who's almost 87, she loves her calculator and her journal here. And if you're me, you will have to put your, your glasses on, of course. And these credit cards, inspect these credit cards and make sure that you are not paying any annual fees when possible. Get rid of those credit cards that have high interest rates. And review your credit report annually because there may be mistakes on it that will help you to get out of debt and stay out of debt. So how can you stay out of debt? How do you stay out of debt? You have to set some goals in place for yourself. We have to be smart with our financial goals. But before you think about setting goals, let's review the five parts of SMART goals. A SMART goal is always specific. Specific means that it will pinpoint something that you want to change or that you want to achieve. A SMART goal is always measurable because you can measure or count a SMART goal, putting it in terms of months. How long is it going to take me? How many months do I want to achieve paying off this debt? It always has to be measurable. It is also adjustable, meaning that you can change it if necessary. It is always realistic. And a SMART goal is time oriented. Putting a time frame on when you want to conquer that, that debt is quite important as well. Now, remember the agony of, of when you were in debt, we're gonna learn. What else will help you to stay out of debt? Remember the agony you had to go through don't spend more than you earn. Remember to track your spending. Something I wanted to mention, I started a journal and a financial journal, and I tracked everything that I spend in a day's time. And now that I often am home more than I am on the outside, I have found that. Of course, I'm not spending as much, but it's so important to see it on paper, being able to look at it somewhere that you could really track your spending and see areas that you can concentrate on saving. It's just amazing when you actually see it, see it with your own eyes. Also, it is so important to wait for those sales and please, the most important thing you could do when getting out of debt is take care of your health to avoid medical bills and maybe medications, taking care of your health is utmost important. I just wanna remind you of that. How can you improve your credit? Let's look into these ways to boost your credit report. Arrange to catch, catch up on your payments, pay your bills on time, all the time when possible, check your credit score, pay down your debt, look into a secured credit card and avoid closing certain credit cards. Having older, one thing I want to mention about closing certain credit cards, having older accounts without balances on them open may not be such a bad thing. We hear this question all the time, should I have all of these credit cards open? But it does give your history a positive outlook. But you also must make a commitment to not rack them up with any additional charges. Discipline is a good word. I like to try to keep in my vocabulary. What will you do with all the money that you're no longer spending on your debt? I will save for my favorite vacation. I'm going to invest with Clearview. I will find a hobby like biking, 
or doing your favorite sport, I will give and serve. That's awesome. Now we've covered a lot of topics in a relatively short period of time, including different kinds of debt and how to determine if you have too much debt, how to improve your credit report and your credit score, how to tackle your debt, ways to avoid pitfalls of credit, and how to rebuild a good credit history. Most importantly, we've talked about ways to stay out of debt. I want you to keep in mind that our goal for the seminar is not only to give you the tools and the information that you need to improve your credit situation, but to help you develop a personalized plan based on your needs, your credit situation, and your goals. Consider all of this as a personalized roadmap that will help lead you down the road to getting out of debt and staying out of debt once and for all. Also remember, Clearview can help you with all of your financial challenges. I'm here to answer any questions for you. We'll open it up for a few moments and you can always give me a call if you'd like to add anything to my presentation or if I can help you out in any way. I'm Jackie Daigle. I can be reached at 412-495-6137. If you're not comfortable asking me a question at this time, please, please reach out to me. Not every story I hear is great, but I love to hear how you're doing and I hope that you enjoyed my presentation today. And I apologize if there was any audio issue. I, I think I may have gone out a little bit, but hopefully, hopefully you were able to gain something today from my presentation. Thank you, stay safe and stay out of debt. Thank you everyone.